What's up, y'all? It's Kimmy Coco, your host of Connecting the Dots podcast. How are you doing? Um, don't forget, we are sponsored by So Mississippi Candles, so make sure you check them out um, at SoMississippi.com. Today we have a guest, Charmaine Moss, a real woman of Atlanta Magazine. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Kim. Thank you for coming. So tell us about this magazine. I just want her to get right into it because then we could just build on from there because there are so many great things that are happening in Atlanta. So tell us about the magazine. How did you get this idea and how did you get started? Okay. Um, Actually, I have carried the vision for this magazine ever since 2000. Um, And the idea came about when... um, I used to have an, an office on Mitchell Street, oh, Mitchell Street, mm-hmm. and um, back then there was a, a mixture of corporate and homelessness because Bank of America had their uh, corporate office right there on Mitchell Street, and mm-hmm. so lunchtime, you know, you would see the the combo. Bustle and bustle, yeah. Yes, yes, and um, one day we were having a um, a budget meeting in my office and you know we were trying to figure out how we were going to make budget and uh this young lady just walked in the door one day and so um she looked at us and she said um my name is um and your name is and so we introduced ourselves her name was marie and we introduced ourselves and she said oh what do you guys do here miss charmaine and we weren't expecting anyone to come in and so um we started telling her what we were doing and she kept saying oh how wonderful how wonderful well long story short marie stayed with us for about 45 minutes just talking Mm -hmm. i mean i asked her i said are you lost are you looking for somebody in the building and she said no just walking through and when you look uh look at marie you could tell that there was a lot going on you know um she had very short hair um, and her hair was divided by these colorful rubber bands. You know how the little yeah. kids wear the blue mm-hmm. and the red and yellow? Um, and she wore glasses. She had a pair of denim shorts and some white high top sneakers. And so um, just very cheerful. Well, in that 45 minutes, Marie began to tell us her story. Back during that time, HIV and AIDS oh, was wow. prevalent. Yeah. 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 She was um, originally from Decatur, um, but had been diagnosed with HIV. Mm. And when her family found out about it, they kicked her out of the house. Mm. And so Marie was actually living right around the corner from where our office was in a shelter. Now, um, as she's telling us the story, her smile never left. She still felt like, you know, everything was great. She began to also tell us that she had been violated a few times, Mm. um, being while she had been in the shelter. She was receiving $125 every two weeks. That was her income. And um, I mean, we're hearing this, and yet her demeanor never changed. She felt like life was still great. She was grateful to be here. Now this comes in the midst of us talking about a budget meeting. We're, we're concerned about budget, finance. And here this lady comes in and she's telling us her story. Well, I asked Marie, I said, what can I do for you? And it happened to be on the Thursday of the week of Easter. And so she said, I would love to go to church, but I need my hair done and I don't have anything to wear. And I said, Marie, if you'll meet me back here Saturday at 10 o'clock, I'll make sure your hair gets done and I'll make sure you have something to wear. Well, I got back to the office on that Saturday and no Marie. So I felt like there was purpose in Marie visiting us. There was purpose, there was, it was for us to reevaluate what was important to us. At that point, I realized that Marie's story would never get heard if someone didn't tell it. And how many other Marie's are out here How many other black women have amazing stories that will never get told? We know Essence is a great magazine, but unless you have the name to match, your story will never get heard. And so that's where the idea came from. Um, Fast forward to 2018, the idea came back to me. So I carried it 
for 18 years. So the idea um, that the message that Marie was bringing to you was that there are people in Atlanta that you think that their stories are just as intriguing as maybe like someone that is famous or something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Because just even in that short interaction, that was a powerful message for you. Absolutely. So how many just people walking around here have a powerful message? Okay, so that's the premise. Yes, yeah. yes. And a lot of times, you know, uh, and you know this, we suffer in silence. Black women specifically, um, I feel like that's generational and it's something that we carried from. We've been taught, we've been taught that. Like just suck it up and keep yep. going. We've yeah. been taught that. Mm -hmm. I mean, just in slavery alone, we've been taught that. When you see your child get sold off, yeah. Or when you see your husband, your man, gets tortured, all tortured day. Yeah. and or get sent to another farm. I mean, what what else can you do? You have to suck it up, you know. And so, yeah, we we've suffered in silence. So we think that we're the only one in our situation. And so this magazine is a platform where we tell these stories. We're breaking the silence. We're giving a voice to ordinary women and those especially those that are doing extraordinary things they've come through the struggle and now they can tell their story because if you hear it now you're going to know well if she made it through i can too so where do you guys publish this magazine is it in print or is it online well the great thing is um when we've been digital now we're going to print as well so how often do you publish i mean how many how many issues do you publish? Like, is it monthly or? Monthly digitally. Mm-hmm. We do monthly digitally. So how do you come up with the each month what the subject matter is going to be? Well, women are emailing us, you know, saying that they want to be a part of it. They are hearing about the magazine. And um, so uh, Kristen, who we were just yeah. talking about, is my editor-in-chief. And she reads these articles. And we make a decision from there. Yeah. That's great. So what do you think um, in the future, what direction do you think you guys will go in? Well, um, we're, we're providing more platforms, creating more platforms for women to tell their stories. Um, in 2019, we started having uh, luncheons, monthly luncheons to gather women together, black women together, so that they can talk amongst each other and tell their stories to each other and to network, you know, um, help each other with their businesses or resources. Imagine if we all came together with just our resources. It doesn't have to be finances. You know, it could just be your knowledge, your wisdom. Imagine what that would do, you know, if we brought those things together and help each other. You know, it said that, um, I can I can do you know I can make it on my own but imagine if we came together I can do more with you than I can apart from you absolutely do you think that you'll bring women in from other cities as well or are you just concentrating right now we're concentrating on Atlanta yeah so that's why we're real women Atlanta magazine right <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that um, Atlanta is just has so much to offer and so many stories um, what about the elders in Atlanta do you see them and their stories uplifting the younger women? Do you guys concentrate more on like the elder knowledge and wisdom or the younger women? Um, it's interesting that you said that because we are adding a section called the elders. Really? We are. <laughs> we are. And we, we were just talking about that because there is so much wisdom, you know, that they have. When I think about, um, imagine if Coretta Scott King was here or and you put Coretta Scott and um, Rosa Parks and all of them in one room and we can listen to the things that they've had to go through yeah we need the we need the wisdom we need that knowledge Absolutely. Re recently um, in the social media atmosphere there was a Monique came out and mm -hmm. said something about younger women wearing bonnets out in public and stuff like that and it wasn't really received well mm -hmm. by the younger mm -hmm. people. Um, what do you think is a good delivery for the <laughs> older generation so that they can reach the younger women and kind of like offer that mm -hmm. wisdom and mm -hmm. that guidance? Um, it has, it definitely has to be delivered in another way. Yes. Um, yes. Because yeah, yeah, their guards are already already up you know one of the things that we were talking about um is standards mm. yeah mm. 
Yeah. If the elders can teach us about standards, because um, there was a time when men called women ladies and not the B or the H, you know. That was, uh, that was, um, I mean, that would never happen back then. Oh, no. Absolutely not. But, um, but when there are no standards, when you're not taught that, um, that it's okay for a man to still have chivalry, for a man to open the door for you or pull out the chair for you, when you're not taught to expect that, yeah. So yeah, we need the elders to come back and the elders to teach us these things and to let us know as a lady, this is what you should expect. So your target audience is obviously women, but don't, do you think that if when men get a look at this that mm -hmm. they'll get a better understanding? We don't, we don't exclude men. Um, when we would have our luncheons or our um, events, special events, um, we definitely want men to attend. Um, in March of uh, 2019, we did the celebration of black women, um, Still I Rise, because um, it marked the 400th year when the first slave ship came into Jamestown, Virginia. And so we wanted to commemorate um, black women from our history and also to honor black women here in Atlanta. So we honored 13 black women uh, from here. Um, and then, um, and we had men, men to attend. I mean, loved it. Really? Uh-huh, we did it at the Skad Show Theater. Um, and then in um, September, we did uh, an entire weekend. We called it a unity celebration. We started at the Georgia State Capitol that Friday morning. Um, and we had a panel of, um, I think there were nine, nine women from different areas, um, different industries. And we talked about the state of black women today. Uh, what were some of the problems? What are some of the solutions? Um, and we had men to attend. Then. So in, at that, I mean, that's something I would love to attend. I wish I would have known about it, but going We're going to do it again. Yeah, I'll <laughs> definitely. So what were some of the standout issues that came out during that time, during that event? Um, our differences, you know, how society talks about, um, they, they want us to focus more on our own, what makes us different mm -hmm. than what brings us together. So um, a sister who may have her PhD versus one who has her GED. You know, society wants us to believe that that sister with a PhD is better than the one, you know, with a GED. Absolutely. Or um, you're wearing braids. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? So um, society says, well, because my hair is straighter than yours, or I may have good hair <laughs> versus <laughs> kinky hair, or because my skin color may be lighter than yours, or I'm taller than you are, or I'm, I'm thinner than you are. These are the things that society says, you know, makes us different, and so therefore, you know, but no, let's talk about the fact that at the end of the day, no matter what your skin color is, no matter what your hair texture is, no matter what your educational level is, at the end of the day, we're still black women. Yes, yes. Um, last year, COVID-19 took over the world, and it stopped a lot of things. But some people were able to actually become more creative because we were, you know, stuck at home. So how did that impact the magazine, the COVID-19 outbreak? Um, well, you know, it, for me, it gave me time to pause um, because we were used to going, 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 going. Um, and so now it has given us some fresh ideas, mm. um, things that we can do better. Um, more things that we can add on, like we said, you know, um, um, making, um, creating more platforms now for, for us, rather than just the magazine, rather than just events, you know, um, we're paying more uh, attention to our social media pages and creating things now where on social media we can do interviews or we can have um, women talk or write, you know, about who they are and tell their stories on, on social media as, as well. While we're there, let's just interject and tell people how they can follow the magazine on social media or any of your pages on social okay. media. Okay. Um, on Facebook, we are RWAM, Real Women Atlanta Magazine. 
On Instagram, we are Real Women Atlanta Magazine. And you can always go to um, our website, which is Let Real Women. Let me right now. Uh-huh. RealWomenAtlanta.com. Okay. Let's check the social media, y'all. Mm-hmm. Real Women. There it is. It's Real Women Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. So these are some of the platforms that we are, um, we're paying more, um, we're giving more attention to. Um, and so we're creating some amazing things that will so soon if you, to come. Because I, sometimes I can't find mm-hmm. stuff. But if you're on, I don't know if you guys can see this. Of course you can't because I can barely see it. But it's pink and that mm-hmm. one. Now there's, there's um, another one that's R-W-A-M. Okay. So make sure on Facebook that you go to RWAM Real Women Atlanta. That one that you were on uh, was the uh, the first one that we created, and, and that's why we're doing something totally new. Okay. Yes. Awesome. So I would love to learn more about it and get more involved. So when is the next event that you guys are having? Um, we are having our relaunch, you know, COVID, we paused. Right. Like everybody else did. Right. Yeah. Um, but um, we're doing a relaunch celebration, and that's going to be on July the 22nd by invitation only. So if you want to be a part of it, you got to make sure that you contact Kim. <laughs> follow the page, y'all. Follow the page. Yes. Or follow yes. us. We'll point you in the right direction. Yes. CTD underscore ATL on Instagram. Make sure that you say that you came from Kim. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, and, and where is it going to be? It's going to be at the um, Commerce Club. Uh, 191 Peach Tree Street. Nice. Yes. The 49th floor. Um you know, we were looking for an event space. And one day, you know, I just heard Commerce Club. I'm like, Commerce Club? And I've only been there once. And that was like three, four years ago for a meeting. And um, I called them up and scheduled a tour. And halfway through the tour, I just said to- You could vis- you saw the vision of oh the event. Oh my God. So what is the event, what is it gonna be about? Like, tell me what the- Well, I'm, we're gonna um, celebrate, you know, uh, the relaunch of the magazine. There's gonna be networking. The Commerce Club is providing food. Um, they will take an opportunity to uh, tell you about the history of the Commerce Club. And, and then also they're, they're doing some giveaways nice. as well. So there'll be trial, um, memberships that they're going to be giving away and they've even uh they've really gotten involved because they like what we're doing um they've even um gotten a vendor to come they've contracted a vendor to come who's going to do uh it's a 360 photo booth stage oh i like those yes yes so never miss a photo op you guys know me (laughs) (laughs) so um so yeah it's going to be an amazing night that's awesome. Uh huh. One of the most challenging relationships black women have is the mother and daughter relationship. Oh. How has being a mother impacted your influence and the things that you're doing at the magazine? Um, hmm. Interesting. Um, it's difficult. It is difficult, isn't it? It's difficult, yeah. And it's just ever changing yes. as they age. Yes, 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 yes. All you can do is pray. It's just and so- continue to be that example. <laughs> That's all you can do. Yeah. Be an example. That's great advice. So as your children age, your parenting style has to change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you stop being, <laughs> well, you can't ever stop being the parent, but you can't be, you can't dictate. You have to just guide <laughs> or suggest. <laughs> and I, that's the hard part when they become adults. And your daughter is in a powerful position. She is. So tell everybody, you know, how that well, works out. Okay. So I have a different perspective. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm welcome to all. I, I, I do. Um, Mother's Day, you know, I was I was sitting in and I was just evaluating the whole parenting, being a mother um, thing. And 
what I realized was this, um, being a parent, especially being a mother, is a title that never changes. Mm. Neither does the responsibility. Mm. As a mother, we always want the very best for our children. The role of a mother is so important, check this out, that even when George Floyd had, was on the ground and the policeman had his foot on his neck, he called his mother. Who died who, already. Who had already died. Mm -mm -mm. That's how powerful the role of a mother is. And so I remember when my daughter used to say to me, um, I wish you could be like my friend's mom, who is her best friend. And I used to say to her, but you didn't come into the world being my friend. Mm -hmm. And so I understood um, why, even now, why I would say that to her, because friends come and go. Right. But your mother will always be your mother. Your, your mother will always tell you the truth. Your mother will always want the best for you. Even if you don't agree, I'm still going to always tell you the truth. So I see things slightly different now than, you know, um, someone who might say, um, well, because they're an adult, guess what? In the eyes of the Almighty, we're all children. Right. Yeah. And when you get to a place where you're grown, now you, you, you stop learning. You can't receive wisdom. You stop receiving wisdom. You stop receiving knowledge because you feel like you've already you're, met. You've arrived. You've arrived. To the place of wisdom and then that part of you shuts down. It shuts down. And none of us could ever get to that place. So, the, so like we were saying before, the delivery, mm -hmm. um, in the writing and in the in the magazine, do you keep that in mind, like what the perspective that you're coming from, um, to reach target audiences? Like, are some things specifically for younger women? Yes. Okay. Yes, um, we make sure that the stories that we um, that we receive will reach. It doesn't matter what age group that it's written in a way where it will reach. Um, there's uh, a young lady um, who used to be a part of our team, um, Deidre Gary. Deidre is a young mother who has five children. Now, to see her children, very mannerable. Um, and she has teenage boys. I think the oldest one is in his sophomore year of college. Um, very mannerable. And um, she didn't push them off here or there. They would take vacations together. She was always and is active, always yeah. active in their life. And so what I tell um, young women, if she can do it, so can you, you know? But she purposefully have done this. And she has a career, she has business, a business. You know, um, if she could do it, so can you. Yeah. And she has five, yeah, yeah. And amazing kids, amazing. So, yeah, we, when we write these stories, we make sure that there's something in these stories that will touch everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you ever find the lady from the first? No? Wow. I wonder Marie, we... no. I think she, it was just purposeful yeah, for her absolutely. to be there. Because it helped us to put things in perspective. You know, what's important. And um, I tell you that after she left, I looked around my office and, um, and I thought, you know, how blessed I was because if I had nowhere else to go, I mean, in my office alone, you know, if I had to sleep on the floor in my office, I was in no jeopardy of being harmed from anyone. It still didn't make me homeless because I had a roof. A roof, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it just helped me to put things in perspective. Absolutely. I love this because I think that um, when people think of Atlanta or when they see Atlanta, they think we are all like the girls on Love and Hip Hop or the girls on The Housewives of Atlanta mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we all just walk around looking for like where we get 
plastic surgery and party <laughs> and throw drinks on people. Right. Like, so this is cu- going to tell stories of everyone working, not working. Yes. No matter your socioeconomic position. Yes. That is so needed. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So where, if you wanted to buy it in print, where could we, where will we be able to get it? Our first um, printed issue will be given out at the celebration. <gasps> so this is going to be a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. So July 22nd is going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be an amazing, an amazing event. We're giving out the first printed issue of let the me, magazine. Let me see what day that's on. We're gonna. It's a Thursday night. Oh, nice. Uh huh. Yeah, and we did it on Thursday night um, because we didn't want it to interfere with anyone's weekends, you know. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be an amazing time. So, um, some of the other things that are gonna be in the magazine: fashion, beauty, and hair; mm-hmm. health, fitness, and wellness; food, travel, business, and finance; entertainment. And special features. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And let me tell you about that. What we've purposely done this time, um, we didn't hire writers. Hmm. We hired, uh, what well, we didn't hire, we partnered with bloggers. Mm. Because this is what they do. You know? No, and this is definitely better because yes. I mean blogging is con- is starting to become a lost art uh-huh. it started off so well and now I think Instagram kind of like stole the shine of the blogs and podcasts you know people are more liable to listen yeah. than read yes it. so yes. that's gonna be awesome yeah yeah so these are um, contributing partners now that we have um, and nice. you know we we believe in um, and this is something that Andrew um, you know our brand our brand Investment, manager yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, we are cross marketing mm. again you know if we can work together yes. we can gain more exposure together than we can just working with ourselves and so this is a way now for bloggers to get more exposures uh exposure as well are you accepting new bloggers oh absolutely so how can a blogger get in touch with you if they wanted to contribute to the magazine they can send us an email it's uh real women atlanta at yahoo.com i know some bloggers out there and personally and i know um one of i'm gonna let one of my friends know she's a teacher and she blogs about teaching okay and um they i mean they've gone through so much during the pandemic Mm -hmm. i just want people to hear from a teacher's perspective, oh, yes. <laughs> what they were going through. I mean, yeah. it was it was a lot switching over for some of the children. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, this is awesome. I so look forward to um, continuing the relationship with you guys. Absolutely. And promoting and, and cross. I don't know. We'll we'll talk yes, about that later. Yes. But everybody, make sure you follow. Um, from a male perspective, Jay Black, is this something that you would be reading? Would you read this? I mean. You know, men are supposed to stay out of women's business. <laughs> so, but, but no, nah, I mean, yeah. I guess it's, you, you do get a different perspective. I guess as a man, you're able to imagine, see. Imagine because the I insight think, you'll have. I feel have. like we all, like, we really all go through the same things, mm-hmm. but we all feel like it's uh, specific to just our gender or whatever. Because just like how y'all said that y'all bottle, y'all hold so much stuff in and y'all been through so much, men have too. But I think. Once we get out of our own box, out of our own head, and you know, kind of see that we're all going through the same thing, you know, I think we'll be able to make the the progression that we need. And I think a, a magazine like this will help a man out. You know, mm-hmm. just absolutely. Imagine so the insight you would have as a yeah. young man, having read some of this stuff. Absolutely. And then you could go out into the dating world and just be like. Absolutely. But it has to go both ways though, because just like the man oh, yeah. is reading, yeah, yeah, yeah. the woman has to read too, so she can understand the man. Absolutely. It's just right. not always about keep that it's dialogue a give and take open. thing. It's a give and take thing. As much and there, as and there are know, stories that we um, will be talking about in terms of relationships. Listen, I mean, the truth is the truth. Our sisters need to know that you can't you can't do without a man. And vice versa. Say it again. Yeah, like, we versa. need each other. We, we need really each can. other. I think that the narrative um, that's going on now in 
pop culture mm-hmm. is that like if the guy is broke you can't deal with him <laughs> you can't date him you mm-hmm. can't talk to him and you know you're supposed to just meet a guy that's successful and have him help you out mm-hmm. and it, we have to definitely switch that narrative mm-hmm. in order Absolutely. for us to build our community yes because it's all at the end of the day it really is about community yeah i don't know where that message got lost but um covid gave us no choice but to deal with the people in our home yes for for a minute yes and so i think that when we had to change and look inside ourselves because we were forced to stay Mm -hmm. with ourselves what we saw is the nucleus of that unit is kind of broken mm-hmm. so we need to get back to to that so i hope oh, absolutely that, um i look forward to reading and hearing more about these conversations and i'm very very interested in the wisdom section yes yes because i really miss that you know everyone says this is so cliche it takes a village to raise a child but the village has elders mm-hmm Mm-hmm. And even in any story that you read in the Bible or any of the old books, the elders in the community were always the ones that healed it. Yes, yes. So I hope that we can all get oh, yeah. back to Absolutely. that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I remember um, uh, Iyama Van Zant on her show. Um, she had some. She had a group of women on there, and I remember them going through what seemed to be uh, a rite of passage Um, through elders there were older women who imparted wisdom in them as they were going through and each yeah they were like whispering into them I think I saw that I loved that yes yes yeah and I would love you know to even have an event where that is done yes that would be powerful that really would yeah that That really would would. so I just um I'm going to wrap it up. Is there anything else that you want to tell everybody about the magazine? Um, just, you know, uh, follow us on social media. Um, check out our webpage, realwomenatlantamagazine.com. Um, and if you're interested in being um, one of our partners, advertisers, sponsors, you know, send us an email, realwomenatlanta at yahoo.com. Yes, yes, yes. Everyone get involved. I really, really hope that everyone checks this magazine out because we need to see the different shades of the women in Atlanta. And this will definitely give you an opportunity and an insight into the different shades of woman yeah. in Atlanta. Yeah. So check them out. Make sure you check us out, CTD underscore ATL on Instagram. We have a Facebook page too, y'all, Connecting the Dots. Make sure you like it, share some of the stories. Um, thank you guys for contributing to the conversations that are ongoing on social media while we have been on a little hiatus. So make sure you follow us. Make sure you follow InnovativeBlackStation.com. Make sure you go to that website, watch all of our old our not old but our past interviews and our past episodes and also check out mississippi so mississippi candles and we will see you next week peace